Hi! In this lesson, we'll learn about the DHT11 sensor. Now, the DHT11 sensor is a sensor that combines two functionalities. One is humidity, and the second one is temperature. Using the DHT11 sensor, we can measure both humidity and temperature of the environment. This is very useful for smart agriculture, environment, monitoring, and so on. The SunFounder Humidity Sensor V1 is very, very useful for many applications. And today we will learn about it, how to connect it, and how to use it. Now, first of all, we can see that this sensor has three pins. One is signal, the second one is VCC, and the third one is GND. The signal sensor is the data sensor. It's one pin that we connect into our data pin, either in one of our microcontrollers. The second one is VCC, which we pull the voltage in, and the third one is GND, which is the voltage as well, ground. Now, we can see that the sensor is pretty small, but it will be very accurate, and it's already calibrated in the lab for use. Now, let's see how we can take the sensor and connect it into our microcontroller. For the DHT sensor, as we've discussed previously, we have three pins. Let's take a look. The first one is signal, the second one is VCC, and the third one is GNT. As we can see, all those pins are basically digital pins. Signal pin is the digital pin, not analog. For this lesson, we use the, the Arduino. And for the Arduino, we have both digital pins and analog pins. For digital pin, we will connect it to pin number eight. The data pin is the yellow cable, the red one, is the VCC and the black one, and the black one is for the GND. Now for the VCC, we connect it right here into 3.3 volt. And for the GND, we'll connect it directly to the GND. Now let's to take a close look and see that we connected everything properly. We have the, the data, which is the signal pin at pin number eight, digital pin number eight. We have the GND pin here, and we have the VCC pin here. It should work perfectly fine that way. Now let's move to the software and see how can we get it going. So we are back to our Arduino ID. Now let's take a look at the code before we will take a look into our console and understand how the hardware interact with the code. Here we have our Arduino Uno with the DHT11 sensor. As we connected it earlier, it's connected to 3.3 volt and to pin number eight, which is digital pin. Now let's take a look over the code. We define the DHT type as DHT11. Of course, we use the DHT library for that. Now the pin is pin number eight, as we mentioned earlier. In this setup, we begin the serial connection and we print DHT test in order to see that the program is running. We will begin the DHT driver using the DHT begin command. Now in the loop, we will wait two seconds every time 200 milliseconds, and then we will get the humidity, temperature, and then we will set temperature as Fahrenheit true. If you are not from United States, you can set the Fahrenheit to false. Now we'll check if the reading failed or not, basically if the values return null or return a valid numbers. Now we will compute the heat index from the values above. And then finally, we will print everything into the console. First, we print the humidity, then we print the temperature, and finally, we print the heat index. Now, let's upload the code using the upload button right here and clear the output and see if the software can work right away. We can see it will start by printing test and then if everything works correctly, it will start printing the value for us. We have the DHT right here. If we can cover it, the values will start changing a little bit. As you can see, the humidity change because I put my finger above it. And if we leave it like this, it should change back and go to a lower value. So as we've seen previously, the DHT11 sensor has three pins. One is signal pin, one is VCC pin, and one is GND pin. As the DHT11 is digital pin, we are going to connect it to one of the pins of the Raspberry Pi, which is right here. Now, if we turn this around, we can find the GND pin right here connect it right here, perfect. Now for the VCC pin, we'll connect it to 3.3 volt, which should be right here at the corner, perfect. 
right here. Now for the signal pin we can choose any GPIO pin but let's take a look at which one we will connect which will be easy for us to follow. Let's go with GPIO 13 right here. Okay perfect. So now we have the Raspberry Pi here connected with the DHT11 sensor. Now let's move to our software and see how we can get the sensor to work. Hi, so now we are back into our Raspberry Pi. As we can see, we have the DHT sensor connected right here. We've connected it previously to the GPIO pin number 13. Then we have the VCC for 3.3 volt, and then we have the GND right here. Now let's take a look into our terminal screen right here. How do we execute the code and how do we make it work? Now, I've already prepared a file called dht.py. Now let's take a look inside by running nano dht.py. We can see the code right here. It's pretty straightforward. We define the pin as dht pin 13, and then we set them all to GPIO BCM. Then we will read the DHT data by sending multiple signals and getting back the response and then figuring out what's the temperature and what's the humidity. It's a very long code, but don't worry, once you get into it, it's very straightforward and very easy to understand. We get the beats and then convert it, get the checksum, and at the end, we will get the temperature and the humidity from the DHT11 sensor. Now, if you look at the main code, we will see that we print it to the screen that we are preparing the program and then we will get the result from the read dht11 data function and then if the result is not empty we will get the humidity and temperature from the result and print it into the screen we will repeat this task every second forever in a while loop now this is the main code and this is the straw just to clean up the gpio after we finished using it now let's run the code by running the commands sudo python dht11.py Sorry, it's dht, not dht11. Now, sometimes the data, it will say data not good. Don't worry about it. It just takes time for him to get the data properly. As you can see, the temperature in the room is about 20 degrees Celsius and the humidity is 58%. You will see it can get the temperature multiple times and we can also see the bits of data it's getting. So we can see the clean data, we can get temperature, we can get humidity, and sometimes we will skip few times because it will say data is not good. Of course, you can overwrite it in the script if you want, so it will not print if the data is not good, and it will just keep trying to get the proper data from the sensor. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and you learned something new. See you next time.